Vikings Talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Like, like the scheme is going to be fu- fundamentally different than wh- what you guys did in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. So it's, it, it goes beyond just the code words and the words. I, it certainly does, and I think, you know, 18 to 19 it changed, you know, going from the system we ran to then having Kevin as the OC and Gary Kubiak's influence, and then in 21 it changed, you know, when you have some, some changes with the staff. And so there's always that evolution and of change, um, but certainly there are elements that are different, but there's only so much you can change. I mean, at the end of the day, you do have sort of these, these staple foundational pieces that are pretty consistent across the league and welcome into purple access that was kirk cousins after uh, practice the ota the vikings held on tuesday it is judd zolgad star tribune sports columnist chip scoggins and executive producer declan goff brought to you by our friends at certainly brewing plenty about them later on and also tcl tv enjoy more especially sports with the tcl tv um, all right, Chipper, off that comment that we just heard from Kirk, what is your, so like my expectation is things are going to be very different, like yeah. offensively, like, like this is not going to be, uh, this is not going to be the same thing. Um, what is your expectation as we talk here late in May, um, about how different the offense is truly going to be? Well, you know, you know, the thing that jumped out to me, Judd, just listen to that in your question to him, how much lack of continuity he has had in terms of play callers and, and, and schemes in his career. Mm-hmm. I mean, go, I mean, he's like, you know, you had the Washington thing and 19, it was different. 20 is different. 21 is different. This is going to be different. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, how much change and, and evolving he's had to do and adapting to, to new offenses or new, I mean, if you get a, you know, Clint Kubiak, how much changed other than the guy calling right. the plays, the scheme didn't really, Correct. I, well, just reading and listening to what came out this week, I think it's going to be dramatically different yeah. <laughs> when they're talking about using flashcards to learn the, you know, and code words and receivers having to um, basically adjust based on seems like a lot more is on their plates too, right? That uh, you get a code word and they're going to have to know where this to line up, how to, how to run routes. So I think, I think the scheme is going to be different. I think um, obviously the, the, you know, the verbiage and all that's going to be different for everybody. But when, when cousins is telling you they're taking home flashcards at night and it feels like he's in eighth grade preparing for an exam, that tells you how different this is going to be. Yeah, and he tried to say too that the while he had a version of this offense in Washington, especially when so he had a year of O'Connell as his quarterbacks coach, and obviously worked with McVeigh with the now Commanders. Um, and his point was, well, in five years it's changed quite a bit, which I'm sure is true. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit surprised he wasn't more enthusiastic about the change because I mean, u- ultimately this is designed to showcase him. Um, so like I I'm curious like what we are going to see because I do fully expect and, and what was uh, chip intriguing about this Wes F- Phillips the new offensive coordinator uh he actually gave a pretty good press conference as far as like intricacies yeah. and stuff yeah. and in listening to Wes I mean there is no question that there is going to be things here that we have not seen previously designed to make the quarterback look good yeah and and we know Cousins is calculated, right? He's right. not going to – how much of that maybe perception that you had that he wasn't more enthusiastic was him not wanting to be like, oh, my God, this is great. I can't believe I'm finally rid myself of the, the past regime. And, it's, you know, I, I think it's – he didn't want to talk about anything with Zimmer and, and um, from last year. And I just think he's, he's so calculated and, and scripted that he's not going to – Right. Open open that door for you, saying because then once you do that, you'd be like, oh, you must have been hated the previous, you know. I, I just think he's not going to open, door. but he should be enthused. I mean, you're getting a guy coming from a Super Bowl winning championship team that, um, and you have an offensive. I mean, this should feel liberating for him that, you know, you didn't have a good relationship with your previous head coach. He was a defensive guy. You had to basically beg the guy to have one on one meetings with you 
each week. Now you're having a guy that you have history with, a new scheme that's going to um, even they're even you know they're talking about getting more out of you than than what you've had here. So I I would guess privately he's pretty excited by this. The one thing that um, and Wes talked a little bit about this as well, but the one thing that I've seen too. So like o- OTAs, Chip, which we have both um, been to for years now. Yeah, you know you can't tell a ton. Like like sure. it's installation and stuff. You know the one thing that intrigues me too though is just in watching him practice, it's very apparent to me that Justin Jefferson knows that he's going to be a huge part, which he should be. Yeah. But two, I love his approach so far because he is. If you can be all in to a practice at this time of year, he mm-hmm. definitely is. Yeah. Um, and, and well, everybody should be. I mean, everybody should be, right? I mean, yeah, but he's wired differently than some guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even criticizing them. I'm I'm praising him. Yeah, no, no, I, I yeah, I mean, he he sort of you know, I, if it's just a you know. Backyard flag football seems like he's going to be all, you know, it's just kind of, right. as you said, he's wired. But I, I think if you're him and you know, uh, you have this new scheme that had a, a how many uh, passes the cup catch last year? I mean, yeah, a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he's like, I'm going to get all over this. I'm going to be on top of this offense and I'm going to come in. Um, Cause this is, you know, when Cousins is talking about, this being a really, I don't know if it's complicated, but when you're having to study at night and flashcards and all that, most years if you're coming back and you have the same offense and all that, these guys are just on autopilot, right? right. <laughs> OTAs are like, if they show, you know, some guys don't even show up. I mean, um, this is not the year for that when you're having a new system. You know, one thing I'm curious about, you, you mentioned uh, Wes Phillips. How, I mean, O'Connell's going to call the plays, correct? And Wes Phillips is going to be in the ear, and then you have a quarterback's coach. I mean, it just seems like there's um, a lot at play there right now for Cousins, I would think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, they're, so I, I think they now have, I think they have a quarterback's coach, if I'm not mistaken, assistant QB's coach, Phillips, um, O'Connell. O'Connell. Now, now O'Connell, I believe because he's got a walkie talkie at practice, I believe that O'Connell right now is calling the plays into Kirk. So I don't know what the plan is there. Um, but Wes is, I think he's, he doesn't strike me as a guy who necessarily wants to be a head coach because he's clearly seen that his whole life. Yeah. Um, but he's a very, very smart guy. And in ta- so here, here's what intrigued me. I asked him about the similar the similarities and differences in Jefferson and Cooper Cup because, yeah. you know, clearly they're going to be used in the same role, but clearly they're not the same player. And the one thing that he said, and it, he's a thousand percent right, but it's going to be interesting to watch it unfold is, you know, Cooper Cup is not as big a downfield threat. Like Jefferson is a downfield threat. Yeah. And so there, you could definitely sense from his answer that there's going to be, Jefferson's going to have the ability to do certain things just because he's so damn good that Cooper Cup couldn't. And that's where it's, it's sort of an X factor as to like how much further can you take that position with a guy who's as talented as Jefferson and a coaching staff that we think is as smart offensively as these guys. Well, that's what's amazing. It's like, you know, Jefferson's already put up historic numbers. And then you're, you're talking about getting to an, another level, yep. which um, which you would think ordinarily would happen anyway. Just, you know, you're in the league longer. You, you understand defenses. You're smart, you know, all that. But now you're bringing in a whole new system that's going to be geared around you. I mean, I, I think there's – it's pretty clear, right, that this is going to be geared around Cousins and Jefferson. And not, not saying Dalvin or anybody else is going to, you know, be overlooked or anything, but it, it's – um, Cooper Cup became a big-time player last year for a reason, right? right. He, set, he set, caught all those passes because they realized they could gear that offense to accentuate what he does and and – and Jefferson's skill set's different. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated to see, uh, you know, how – what new wrinkles they have for Jefferson and just the volume that, that he's going to get. My excitement from skill position players as far as – I don't know exactly what to expect, but I think they're going to be important. Or I know Jefferson won, mm-hmm. clearly won. 
Dalvin too, because I think there's still more there. I, I think yeah. he can become, if he can stay on the field, of course, this is the most important thing. I think he can become far more like Kamara th- than he has been previously. And the third one, yeah. and again, it's a, can he stay on the field is Irv Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Like Irv Smith is already participating now. He looks good. And, uh, you know, I mean, he is the type of tight end that this team has traditionally never had. So if he stays out there, my top three skill position curiosities are Jefferson, Cook, and Irv Smith. Yeah, and, and oh, by the way, if Thielen's four on your list, that's pretty good. And that, that's, been the whole, that's been the whole thing about the frustration, I think, from fans the last couple of years is skill position ain't a problem. No, and the fact that you have that kind of skill, and we can get into the offensive line and you know the deficiencies there, but when you have that kind of skill, you should not be finishing twelfth or eleventh in, in the NFL in scoring. And so, and I you, you mentioned the difference in you know philosophy and how how much I think it, it does go back to play calling philosophy because I think we mentioned this the other week that if I'm correct, they led the league in three and outs. A lot of that, to me, stems from your philosophical approach, right? Run, run, pass. Being too predictable, being, being too headstrong that, oh, we're going to establish a run and we'll just keep pounding and it'll eventually pop, you know? Where I think here it's going to be more creative, more uh, unpredictable. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're going to throw on first down. We're going to throw on second down. Second short. We're going to throw long. We're going to throw deep, you know, that kind of thing versus – Let's just keep moving the chains, you know, keep picking up first down and moving the chains. Cause it's, when you have that mindset, I understand time of possession and that's important. And, you know, but when you have that mindset, um, I think you, you get predictable and I think it's just too hard to score. Cause too many things can go wrong when you play that field, posi- that, that time of possession battle, like let's have, you know, 12 play drives. Ideally that's great. But it, when you're thinking that's the approach, I mean, there's going to be a penalty and it's going to set you back. And then, you know, uh, just too many things can go wrong. And so I, I just think you're going to, I think it's going to be more de- definitely scheme wise and structure and all that's going to be different. But I also think as much as anything, just philosophically how they handle situations and just in play calling. I, to that point, I think one of the most important things is, is this, you will not have a coach now who sees um, his offense as a unit that needs to keep the defense fresh. Yeah. Like that's the thing is you do have to go go back. I mean, you have Justin Jefferson, right? Or Diggs before that. Yeah. How many times did the Vikings potentially pass up quick strikes? Because literally they're like, we have to run the ball. Why? Because we want to keep our defense fresh. That's gone now. Like if you quick strike them, okay, that's awesome. Good. Go hold yeah. them. But like, the, I mean, that seems like a no duh thing and uh, and an obvious jump to conclusion there but it's not to me like we literally saw a coach who was and it worked for a while again it was very successful for a while but he was trying to protect his defense from being thrown back out on the field and so like he encouraged didn't want mistakes but he wanted those 12 play drives because time of possession then swung in his favor and didn't put his defense out there to get tired yeah and and you're right again if you can do that and, and, and live by that way, mm-hmm. wonderful. But it's a hard way to live. And I don't know that it's it, – it, I don't say it's an impossible way to live, but just you have to – too many things have to go right. And, um, you know, what, there was a stat, I think, a couple years ago where a second short, they led the league in, in uh, called runs. You know, it's like – I just think the entire approach is going to be different. And to me, that's where um, – that's where I think you're going to see more a foot on the gas. Yeah, <laughs> um, and you should. And and, and uh, really use the weapons that you have in a, in a way. And, and I don't want to say like they haven't used Jefferson because again he's put up these historic numbers in the first two years. But it's I think it's just going to be more um, more usage of your best players and smarter, right? Smart. Yeah, like that's, that's, probably, a, that's probably a better way to say it. Yeah, because because Jefferson's statistics are phenomenal. You're yeah, right. You would, like, yeah, there's no problem there. But then you go back and watch the film and you also go back and like look at the statistics that you're talking about, Chipper. And that's where the problem is. It's like, OK, he's really, really good. But have you maximized it? You know, I mean, it's everything too. last year. U.S. Bank Stadium, the Lions game. 
seven catches, like what, 114 yards. He's having yeah. a great game. And then he's just, oh, he's gone. He's been, you yeah. know, that's now, if that ever, if Justin Jefferson ever gets off to a great start and disappears, these guys are going to, are going to say, what the hell? Like, they're not going to, going to just accept it. They're going to say, how do we get him open? Well, and that, you know, there are a couple of times last year where we're counting up his targets. If we're counting up his targets in a negative way, I'll be surprised. I agree I, with that. You know, whereas before you're like, why he's got four targets this game? How is that even possible that Justin Jefferson has four targets in, in an NFL game? I mean, just that can't happen. So I'd be surprised if that happens. And, and maybe that's, you know, those stats where we're talking about like the second, third, or, you know, whatever the, you know, the sequence that you're run, run, pat, you know, I think they talk about working the margins. That's what Quasi does a lot. And, and that's where you get more out of Cousins. So they're like, how do you get Cousins to another level? And they, their answer is always, you know, get more out of the work the margins or whatever the phrase is. Um, because it's it's not like you're going to reinvent Kirk Cousins. Right? No. No, you're going to assist him, though, and hopefully put him in. And that's why I hope, like, this – this, and I know it's a curve to try and learn this thing, but you hope it comes along quickly because, you know, you want to hit the ground running with the thought process of the offense has evolved and changed since Kirk last tried to run this one in particular, but he still has a familiarity enough to execute it fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some familiarity, but – I mean, Washington probably feels like a lifetime ago again for him, right? I mean, five years in the NFL is an eternity, you know. Well, and, and I'm sure they've tweaked and done different things to the scheme. So, but I mean, yeah, you have the basis of it. Yeah. But um, as I think he even said, it, it feels like he's starting from scratch. Yeah, he did, which concerns me. Yeah, I mean, we'll see, but that does concern me. I thought he'd say, "I love this; it's great. I can't believe this." And he's like, "Yeah, we're sort of going back." I was like, "Okay, buddy, let's uh, let's pick it up a little bit. <laughs> that, well, let's get it going." <sighs> especially when you and guys always talk about um, the verbiage and the way things. I mean, it is. I'm sure for those guys, I, I'll have to look it up sometime. I had remember back in uh, the day that the dome roof collapsed. I, I did that story where. Uh, Daryl Bevel, I went behind the scenes and they showed me the, the making of a game plan. Yeah. And I said, give me a, uh, give me a uh, play call. Just like what, you know, what they have to spit out in the huddle. John, it's like, it was unbelievable. That you was know? West coast. That yeah. Was what Favre could I, had, do. I had to try to find it sometime. Cause it was just, I mean, it felt like, and that was one play, you know, West I mean, coast that, dude was incredibly like, why did they make it that complicated? The verbiage. You're well, telling some, everybody what they have to do. I know. Yes, and and you're giving them assignments and what they're supposed to do. But the thing about that was that that's why there are some. I think it. North Turner was uh was a digits guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And the West Coast is actual verbiage, which is why Childress always talked about um, if the quarterback could spit out the play correctly, and we always laughed about it, but he was yes. dead serious because if you couldn't spit the play out correctly, like half the team didn't know what the hell they were supposed to be doing on the play. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you always wonder, like, do they coaches make this too complicated? I mean, of I, course they do. I sat there and listened to him recite that, and I'm like, you know, my, my I'd be overloaded with like, you know. But but I guess the football players, this is what they do. This is their job, and it's right. second it's second nature. So it's, it's like doing know, a column it, to you. Yeah, for us, it's it's you know, like wow, that sounds like a lot for them. It's just like okay, I'm only listening to one small part. I know my part, you right? Know. But if you're new to it, yeah. But that's wrong. what I'm saying. Like if it if it's new and you're having to relearn all this stuff, it's like oh, I want to I want to hang out the lake this summer. I don't want to be spending it <laughs> learning all these <laughs> yeah new flashcards. So if you are a, a, a guy who's got got to sit down with his flashcards, Chip Scott, <laughs> you got to learn a new offense, or you got to learn something for your job. You know the best thing to do? It's relax. And there's nothing more relaxing, in my opinion, and I'd be curious to get yours, than, re than relaxing at the kitchen table with a tall boy, surly, furious. Can you think of a better way to learn something for your job? Judd, what did I text you the other night? It was late. It yeah, was, it was a Friday night. And I had to text Judd. I was on the same page with the tall boy furious. I love the tall boy furious. I go for the tall boy. I know some people like this six, six packs or the twelve packs. Me, I'm going with the four pack tall boy. Tall boys. I, I agree with night. you. 
It just tastes, it, as the kids say, it hits different. <laughs> it's the spot. Do the kids still say that? I don't know. I didn't I'm know about, the kids said that. I used to say that hits the spot. I'm so far behind. I have no idea. Yep. It, sounded, yep. it sounded good when I said it, though. <laughs> exactly right. And that and that is your opportunity right now before the weekend hits to pick up whatever your your favorite flavor is from our friends, Chip Endorsed, Judd Endorsed, Declan Endorsed from Surly Brewing. I got a name for you. I got a name for you that I think we should keep an eye on. And it's not a player. Um, special teams coordinator Matt Daniels, Chip Scoggins. Ooh. Uh, I went to his press conference, um, all, all the cord- coordinators, uh, Donatel and Wes Phillips and Daniels talked after practice on Tuesday. Um, one press conference, okay? So I'm, I'm going to make a statement that's going to be like, <laughs> seem bold, but uh, it's one press conference. But his approach at the podium reminded me young Mike Tom. Oh, oh boy. He's, he's, he's got prepared, head Yeah. Prepared, owned it. Um, wasn't afraid of it, didn't mm-hmm. seem to shrink one bit, was positive yet insightful. Um, young Mike Tomlin. I think you're I think we might be looking at a future coach in Matt Daniels. Um well like I say that's the the that that coordinator spot is great proving ground, right? Because you have John Harbaugh. Um you know, you're coaching different guys. You got to be able to adapt because all of a sudden injuries and then your key guy gets taken away because now he's he's a starting linebacker and he was your best special teams guy. So, um, I yeah, I didn't see or hear him, but um, we'll have to keep an eye on him. You think he, uh, he, he won't be long for this place because he's going to be... I liked how he owned... I liked his approach. He did not see... There are some guys, and this is not a slam. There are coordinators who are coordinators and they're very mm-hmm. good at it and they're football yeah. lifers and they've worked their ass off and this is no but there are certain guys that we all see that approach podiums and you're like that guy's not going to just stop here well and yeah one time so so like i might be totally wrong but i was just impressed because i remember from day one with tomlin yeah saying whoa this guy's different well that's i remember wasn't that the uh the reaction uh, amongst the media corps after Tom got after and spoke, we were like, okay, this guy's a head coach. He's going yeah, he came up prepared with a statement, be, like, like a head coaching statement, more prepared than yeah. Brad at times. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, uh, you know, it, it sounds like they've uncovered a, you know, up and coming good coach. And, um, I love special teams coaches too, because they're, they're wired different too. Right. Oh, they're, yeah. They Allie Wedge, right. Was that the one? Uh, oh, for <laughs> Paul Ferraro. <laughs> Allie Wedge. And then there was, Brian Murphy, yeah. who was forced Specialty to, kicks. The the special poor guy kicks. they forced to lie the day that Hutch Allen Longwell disappeared to go recruit. That was one of the, I, I love Brian Murphy. He was a funny guy, but it's like, where's Hutch? He's inside working on specialty kicks. Steve Hutchinson? <laughs> <laughs> and, poor, and, and, and I guess he went up to PR afterwards and just exploded because he's like, you yeah, guys well, made me look like, and and if you recall, Brad didn't talk that day. No, no, it's, it, they didn't change the, I mean. They didn't change the schedule. They had a report that, that they're flying down her, and uh, <laughs> we're sticking to the script. It's Brian Murphy's day to talk. It's like, Murph, where's so there three guys on a plane going to the Hattiesburg to get Brett Favre? You're inside working on specialty kicks. Working on specialty kicks. Jared Allen Hutch. <laughs> The left left Hutch, Hutch, who was never on, as far as I recall, on special teams because he was a Pro Bowl left Hall guard. of Fame left guard. Like, like you might, you know, and Jared Allen, the and Pro Jared Bowl Allen. Allen. Yeah, special teams. <laughs> Poor Brian Murphy, but he was, uh, yeah, he was. Oh, I guess he God. went up to PR and just absolutely melted down, and rightfully so. He's like, I look like an idiot. Great he moments in uh, beat writer history there. Oh God, God, I, I mean, those were fun. And it worked, unfortunately, because yeah. uh, that didn't turn out too well. As <laughs> as you said before, the collapse of the dome roof was not good. Yeah. yeah. Um, where do you think, among the people who are flat out glad that there's been a coaching change, where do you think kicker Greg Joseph ranks? Because <laughs> Greg Joseph has to, it has to be like a 10,000 pound weight off that man's shoulders that he now does not have a head coach who despises yeah. not him personally, but his very existence of his. Doom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we talked last week about the weight. I don't think anybody felt the weight as much as the kickers. Um, oh. It was Zim and kickers were just a, you know, a nightmare marriage. And uh, 
that's such a hard, you know, position because no, you know, kickers are different and who knows what's going to set them off and why they're going to be good or why they're going to be bad. I mean, I guess you could, you can figure out if they have flawed mechanics. You can ask Ryan Longwell's or, but right. So much of that is, is mental and confidence and, you know, Zimmer going for two in a preseason game after Daniel Carlson misses an extra point probably was not the wisest thing for the, for the young man's confidence. So yes, I think Joseph is probably, uh, has a new lease on life <laughs> with, this, with this regime. Do, do you like the plan that uh, Daniel's brought up that he said, and I mean, un- until it's proven wrong, I'll trust him, that there's going to be legit competitions for kicker and punter and that these aren't camp legs, which if it's true, I do like because I always wondered yeah. why Mike didn't wage competitions because he put so much pressure on. It's like, okay, just, okay, have a competition. Yeah, it, and that's... You know, and- and that's your job sometimes. And, and I think there's something to be said about, you know, the pressure of that in, in training camp. Cause you know, everybody in training camp has pressure or not everybody. A lot of guys do cause you're battling for roster spots. Well, why should a kicker be excluded from that? I mean, I know that the, the, the psyche is different, you know, and you want to build up confidence, but um, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I mean, create, create some tension there, create some, and then the guy who wins it is going to come out of it confident, realize he won a job and, you know, they're going to, I'm sure they're going to, you know, fill him with confidence after that, whoever gets the, that job, you know, um, I think they're probably well aware of the history here and uh, how, how, how it's been with kickers. So right. um, I, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's good. I like the, if nothing else, perception of competition. Sure. Because I could never get I, the one thing I never got was it's like Mike, you put so much pressure on the, these guys. Why not allow a guy to be pushed? And then you find out, and if he starts to yeah. miss left and right like crazy, you've got a problem. And it, you know, yeah. but I never got like Mike couldn't stand kickers. He made mm-hmm. their lives hell. But sometimes he didn't have a competition, and I know that they probably thought, oh, that roster, that ninetieth roster spot yeah, is valuable. Maybe. But it's yeah. like you. You're giving the guy a job and then you're putting pressure on. And unfortunately, then you don't find out how they react how to handled, that pressure. How he handles, yeah, how he handles yeah. it. Which is, yeah, I mean, I know it's a different type of pressure, but having, you know, hey, the pressure of you, you need to win this competition to have a job. That's that's the helpful pressure right there, too. So it, do we have, what do we have, OTAs next week or the, uh, or no, I mean, we have the, o- the mini camps, uh, June what? The mini camp I've got it right here, believe it or not. Uh June seventh through the ninth. I believe there is a third OTA, a final and third access to one next week, Tuesday. Yeah, I'm excited for the uh the mini camp, kind of see because that's a little bit more training camp like than yeah, OTAs, the, I think. The attendance that, was has a new good team, I don't know. What's that? I, I said it the attendance has been good at this. Smith is Harrison Smith has gone. I think his wife just had their first kid, but attendance has been good. And and like, it does feel uh, in the two uh, OTAs that have been open that I've attended, you know, there is much more of a feeling of calmness and not that uptightness. I I mean, you could, the problem I thought last spring into last year was you could cut the, cut the air with a knife. Mm -hmm. Like there was so much, pent up anger and animosity i mean that is gone now um but yeah it's gonna be it'll be very interesting to see how o'connell cousins and this whole administration operates when there are some l's by their names well that's it that's it i mean we we said last week that it's um it's normal that you're gonna have kind of this breath of fresh air and because it's a new thing and everybody's happy and getting along um Tension will come. Adversity is going to come. Of course. Uh, you know, tough moments are going to come. That's when uh, it'll be, you know, interesting to see kind of how the first time head coach handles that or handles something off the field that happens. Um, <laughs> That's you know, because it's, it's, you know, it's inevitable that I mean, things pop up that are going to happen that are going to be, you know, it's going to annoy him, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's all about really, Judd, though, coaching quarterback, right? I mean, this is absolutely. I mean, it's it's is the thing. This is what, um, you know, they got to make that work. 
it, it's what Kwesi told uh, Pro F Football Talk this week, and it's true. And I guess the question becomes, can it be seen through, is he said, when we re-signed Kirk, we called Kirk in and said, this is a partnership, which he's exactly right. This is a partnership. Now, co quarterbacks are not just now employees. They are partners. And Amazing I mean, Kirk, Zimmer didn't, he didn't realize that, you know, or didn't try to make that more. He hated quarterbacks, dude. He hated know, quarterbacks and kickers. He, he, despised, he spent his whole life trying to stop quarterbacks. Yeah. And now, I, I mean, that was the flaw in, and it's where, I don't know why, Chipper, it, it's why Teddy was special. He had, yeah, he why did he? Why was it about Teddy? I think it was, he, I think Teddy was wired absolutely like Mike loved. Kirk's not. Um, yeah. I think he loved the fact that uh, the locker room gravitated the leadership part of it. Teddy. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Teddy had yeah. that. There's, still yeah. Dogs. yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think he would have loved Favre, but you know, Kirk is a new wave core. He would have loved Favre. Yeah. More touchy feely guy. And I think that Mike could never see past that. I, I heck, you know what? Case Keenum. Gave Mike the year of Case's life, and Mike resented him. Yeah, the horseshoe. Yeah, you yeah. I mean, horseshoe. he never yeah. he never adopted Case, and Case was far tougher than Kirk is mentally. So he called it a partnership, is what you said. Yeah, Quasi said that um, he, he was asked about Kirk and the contract, and he said we called Kirk in. You know, when Kirk signed the extension, and it, it's a partnership. He said this is a. We said we're all partners here, which he's right. Like, yeah. That can make you bristle, but the quarterback, especially a guy who's paid like Kirk, has to be a partner. And and well, that means everybody accepts responsibility when things go right or wrong. Well, and that's why, Judd, like, what was the game where uh, something was happening at the end of the game and he didn't, he, he Cousins didn't call timeout and the time was going off and he's like, well, that's, you know, that's up to the that's head coach. Mike. No, hell no. I mean, that, that right. you know, you got the quarterback it. that's a partner has to be able to have some ownership of that too in those situations. So, I wonder if if Cousins, we'll find out, right? If he has that in him now, you know that kind of um, take charge personality that you see from the really upper echelon guys. That this is my team, right? Mm -hmm. um, if he has that in him, I don't know. I don't know. And Kirk's year will go a long way, I think, towards deciding one of the most important things. That is, does Justin Jefferson want to be here long term? Because I, mean, the, the, I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, he's putting up crazy numbers, and now, now everybody wants to win. He hasn't right. been in the playoffs here, in the right. playoffs yet. So that's that's the big thing, you know, that's missing. But I mean, yep. in terms of production, it's like he's putting up, you know, a lot of numbers. He's going to put up a huge numbers this year, but he also has to feel comfortable. Like all these guys want to win championships. It's like, is this going? in the direction that, but I, but I'm guessing this new regime is saying all the right things and treating them in, in the way. I'm sure they are making it feel like this is they're on the right path. But I'm I sure told, I, I told Phil and Dex this, I think one of the very important things is this Je, uh, Jefferson won a championship in college and he mm -hmm. now just saw his quarterback from college and his uh, receiver buddy, Jamar chase go to a Super Bowl. And he's gonna say, "I want that. Like, yeah, I want to be. Yeah. I want to feel like I got that chance." Well, and because that guy's a winner. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he, a winner. he's used to winning, right? And he's used to playing for for something big. And so, um, yes, you're right that this um, he needs to see signs that that you know this is going to be a team that has a legitimate chance to be in the playoffs and be you know do some damage in there. And so. Um, that's why it's all fascinating, man. It is. It's going to be a really fun year. All right, Chipper, talk to you next week. Thank you. All right, brother. We'll see you.